So this brand new HTC One just came out and uh, got it about a week ago. This is the box from HTC. They've uh, sort of uh, gone along with Sony here in this sort of wide box, uh, different style packaging compared to say some of the older phones you've seen with the more rectangular uh, tall boxes. Uh, this is sort of a different look and feel, kind of that same feeling as the HTC One X and S. It's kind of that white uh, cardboard paper feeling. But enough about the packaging. Let's jump right into this phone. Uh, the first thing I noticed about the phone when I picked it up out of the box was this awesome, awesome aluminum back. Uh, whether it's aluminum or alloy or magnesium, whatever, it's metal, okay? It's not plastic, it's not polymer, it's not glass, uh, which you've seen on some of the other HTC models. Um, and it's surprisingly similar to the iPhone 5, which is probably why I like it so much. I think the iPhone 5 is a great design. I think that this uh, magnesium alloy back or aluminum on this is really, really a nice touch. Um, if you look at these phones, they look quite similar. Um, you know, I don't think necessarily HTC stole any of the design from the Apple iPhone, but I think that it is remarkably similar um, in terms of its shape, feel, weight, and that sort of thing, uh, which makes it a really nice handset. In fact, I would almost argue that it's the nicest handset that I've seen on an Android phone yet, and I said the same exact thing about the HTC One X when I first got it last year. Uh, HTC have definitely one up themselves in terms of the hardware of this phone, and I'm stunned that more people don't buy HTC phones um, based simply on the design and the build um, around them. So if you compare this phone to say the LG Nexus 4, which is another flagship phone uh, in the Android operating system, just solely from the hardware and the outside of the phone, uh, we can see that the the HTC One is substantially taller. Um, it's also a bit narrower and feels different in your hand. The, I think that the Nexus 4 is actually a crappy design. I actually don't like the design of the Nexus 4. Um, this glass on the back is easy to break. Uh, you can see that it's starting to get scratched up. The, the phone actually feels rubbery and chunky because you, you hold on to this rubber on the outside. And so it just has this blocky, rubbery, plastic feel, um, especially when you grab something like the HTC One where it's solid, it's aluminum, um, really, really robust feeling, very, very nice. Uh, I actually prefer this sort of taller design phone um, as compared to this fatter design phone of the LG Nexus 4, uh, but that's personal preference more than anything. The one thing that I dislike about the build of this guy is the power button. They put the power button here for some reason, and I'm right-handed, so I use my phone primarily with my left hand, um, which makes it incredibly difficult to reach that button. I either have to jostle my thumb up and press it, right, or try and finagle my finger up, and when I do that, I end up torquing the volume every single time. Um, and so that's sort of a design problem in my opinion. Uh, if you're a lefty and you use your phone primarily with your right hand, then it's probably no big deal because your index finger is right there and boom, and it's easy to turn on, easy to turn off. But moving away from where the power button is, you can see that there's a speaker array on the top and bottom. The sound of this guy, the quality that comes out of this phone is fantastic. Uh, they do include the Beats audio platform, which I don't know, it's sort of a gimmick, but you know, maybe it makes things sound a little bit better. But aside from the Beats part of it, the location of the speakers facing forward, right, as opposed to say on the iPhone where it's on the bottom or the Nexus 4 where it's on the back, uh, really broadcast that sound directly towards the, towards the user. And that's really nice. You get a really, really good sense of ringtones and sound out of movies and music and that sort of thing. So the other thing that really jumps out about this phone is the screen. Um, super high resolution display. HTC has the best display on the market for Android right now, period. I've said that since the HTC One X came Came out and I've said it with the Droid DNA and I've said it compared to all these other phones. Uh, LG has the Nexus 4 which has a high resolution display but the colors are off, the screen, the accuracy is off, um, the screen on the Nexus 4 isn't that good. People will, all the fanboys will get angry at me for saying that but it's crap and we're gonna get it out of here. Um, compared to the HTC One, iPhone 5 has a phenomenal display as well. Apple did a really great job with this retina display. Uh, they've continued it since the iPhone 4 into the iPhone 5. Great color accuracy, great saturation, nice neutral, natural looking colors, uh, great display. HTC, HTC One takes that one step further, making it bigger, making it even more clear, more crisp, more pixels, unbelievably better than anything else I've seen right now. Um, I reviewed the Sony X, uh, Xperia Z, garbage display, don't even bother, terrible viewing angles, terrible color accuracy, uh, just a waste of time, don't even go there. But this phone takes the cake right now for at least this time of year. 
Um, the Galaxy S3 is going to, or excuse me, Galaxy S3S is what I like to call it, will be out soon. Uh, and that's going to be a nice display. It'll be probably a little bit bigger than the Galaxy S3. Um, it will be in comparison about the same size as the HTC One, but it's AMOLED, it's gonna have those weird funky saturations, it's gonna be uh, a pentile arrange arrangement, so it uh, probably won't be as nice, in my opinion, as the HTC One screen. So what else is great about this new HTC One other than the design, the build, the screen, the speakers? Well, they've changed sense a lot, and they've lightened it up, and so it's gotten a little bit more like stock Android. Not not nearly as close to stock Android as, say, the, um, the Nexus 4, but definitely more close to stock than than uh, HTC Sense used to be. Um, I've got three home screens here with uh, this new sort of sense sort of widget. I don't know what you want to call this. Uh, it's kind of a Twitter feed, Facebook feed, social feed all rolled into one. Uh, and you can scroll through sort of a la Flipboard style um, with your feed of social activity. And it's kind of annoying that you actually can't get rid of this. Um, I have yet to figure out a way to actually get rid of this screen. Like if I go and click on it and try and remove it, I can't remove it. Um, so I don't know what the deal is with that. I can remove other home screens and add other home screens, but yeah, I can't get rid of that for some reason. So if you're not into social media, I guess you're stuck with this overlay anyway. Um, but otherwise, HTC has actually taken away two buttons or a button down the bottom. They don't have the menu anymore. They have a back and a home. Uh, double tapping home actually brings up your list of recent apps and you can swipe these away or go back into it depending on kind of what you're doing. Um, Otherwise, it looks very similar to other Android phones. You have your app drawer, which you can customize a bit. You have your icon row here, which you can customize a bit as well. You have a built-in weather and clock uh, inside your app list as well. Um, and that's that's kind of it. I mean, HTC does have its sort of widgets, you know, back in here like they used to with some of their power adjustments and some other things that are sort of typical of Sense, but it's definitely less in your face than it used to be, and it's fast, um, and I actually like it. HTC usually has a lot of lag with Sense, and I did see some lag actually in the Sense keyboard, and so I did get rid of that uh, and installed Swipe, which I really like, and um, maybe one day Android will get around to, or HTC or everybody within the Android community will get around to making a stock ROM that doesn't have lag, because up until this point in time, I have yet to see a lag-free Android phone, uh, which <coughs> is why the iPhone rules, but uh, getting away from what's good about the iPhone, HTC's done a really good job here with this phone, all in all. Stock ROM, fast, smooth, really good, taking advantage of Android 4.2. Jelly Bean, uh, it's running 4.2.2, which is nice, perfectly up to date as far as the phone goes the moment it comes out of the box, uh, so that's good for a lot of people. One of the other things that this phone is being touted as is having a really great camera. Um, I have yet to do a full camera review. I do like the camera in here. I think it's fast. I think it loads fast. I think the quality of the photos that it takes um, are good. I think the DP Review photo site actually did a review of this camera compared to some of the other ones, and it didn't actually live up to the full hype that HTC sort of purported. But um, nonetheless, it's a great camera for your mobile phone. Um, I do think it works fast. I think that um, it's going to give people the majority of what they need in terms of what they're looking for out of a mobile camera. Um, and I'll probably do a more thorough review compared to the iPhone 5 camera, which is also really good, uh, and this camera later on. But for now, you can take my word that the camera's good. It's probably going to be just as good, or if not better, than some of the other market-leading phones. Um, but it, don't believe that it might replace your other point-and-shoot or replace your digital SLR or this megapixel, uh, excuse me, not megapixel, but ultra-pixel is the new wave of the future. Um, I've yet to see any evidence of that. Software-wise, apps run smoothly, load smoothly, don't get any uh, major force quits. Um, everything seems to be snappy on this phone. Uh, lots of stuff, uh, lots of sort of bloatware, which I'm not too keen on with this phone. Uh, things like kid mode. I don't have any kids. I don't want kids. Get rid of this kid thing. I'm not interested in kid mode. Uh, that might be great for some people, but eh, not for me. Um, you know, again, apps load quickly. Uh, the data connection seems reliable, seems fast. Um, I'm uh, a little bit annoyed with this, and I'll show you this. If I scroll, it has to do page at a time. I can't just do a little bit, which is annoying, because if my thumb is here, and I want to get down to Messenger, or get down to something that's a little bit lower, I should just be able to do this and then have it stick so I can get to it quickly, right? I don't want to have to do a whole page at a time. I'd like to just do a little bit. But, you know, uh, like for example, Messenger. Like, I know Messenger's on the same screen above, and so if I want to get to it, damn it, it's out of my reach now, so I have to stretch. So anyway, that's kind of annoying. Uh, but, you know, not a deal breaker at all. One other thing that makes me smile about this phone, actually, is um, the new included ringtones and notifications. I think that uh, 
finally, HTC has gotten around to putting in new ringtones into their phones, um, which they've been the same ones like this forever, but I mean, Sense is gonna be in there, but there's lots of new ones. Uh, great sounds, sort of uh, unique sounding uh, as opposed to the traditional HTC sounds that everybody's used to hearing. One last thing to talk about would be battery life. Um, been using the phone for about three days. Uh, it's been really good. Battery's been, I would say, average compared to some of the other top-of-the-line phones. Uh, I get about a day and a half of use, average use, uh, with, you know, texting, emails, pictures, web surfing, games. Um, you know, if you look at the, the history uh, here, which, which people have, um, you know, this isn't unique to this phone, but you can get a break, nice breakdown of how much battery you've used over the day and what's taken up your battery. Uh, and if we actually go back to the gallery, you can see my uh, excuse me, you can see my history of of my use over the past day when um, I charged the phone, before I charged the phone, and you can get an idea of, you know, it's about 22 hours on battery and it was down to 30-ish percent, um, and again, that's over the course of one night, and you can see that, you know, it's it's pretty good use, I'd say. I, I, w I wouldn't call it spectacular, but I wouldn't call it a deal breaker either. Um, you know, the phone definitely does not have a removable battery, so if you need extra battery, you better carry an extra power source. Um, it also does not have removable storage, so think about that, too, if, uh, if you're considering this phone. Um, it does have a micro SIM, which is sort of the way things are going now with SIM cards. But that's usually not a problem for many people. Um, battery and removable storage might be a problem for people, so keep that in mind. Finally, one last comment um, just about the HTC One in general. I really think that this is the phone, the Android phone, for the first part of 2013. Uh, the S4, a la S3S, so like I like to call it, is going to be out this summer as well. Um, I don't think it's going to touch this uh, HTC One in terms of its build quality, its fit and finish, um, the screen. I think HTC's got a real winner here. Uh, I really, really like this phone. This is by far the best Android phone I've held uh, yet to date. Um, the S4 will be nice. I think people will buy it because Samsung's good at marketing. And I think there are now Samsung fanboys and Samsung drones who just see a new Samsung phone and go out and buy it. Uh, very similar to the iPhone fanboys and iPhone drones that go out and buy the new iPhone every year when it comes out. But I think you should seriously consider taking a look at this new HTC One. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with how nice it is, how fast it is, how it fits, feels, and uh, performs in your hand. And uh, one last thing, if you guys have liked this review, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks.